What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to analyze the tape of rookie right tackle Darnell Wright and really just overview his rookie season. Uh, one of the things I noted on tape with this guy is he had a phenomenal season. You can see that as the season kind of went on, he got better and better and better, and he was definitely more comfortable when the final few weeks came around and you can really see the flashes on tape. So one of the things we're going to do in this video is really look at the positive reps that we saw on tape from Wright. We're going to look at some of the things in terms of advanced techniques that he did in college, which he's definitely translated into the NFL. And of course, at the end of this video, we'll look at some of the negative reps as well, some of the losing reps he obviously had. Uh, we're going to start with this first player right here, just a really nice job slingshotting the defensive tackle. Now you're going to get a wide zone to the right of the screen is a very difficult block for right to get to because you can see the defensive tackles lined up literally right next to the other defensive tackle so right has to get out in front of this guy now an alternative to getting in front of a guy is you can let him jump the gap and then you can basically get behind him which is also referred to as a slingshot block so on this one here he's going to slingshot the defensive tackle uh, sometimes it's hard to be to, to get in front of guys especially defensive tackles that want to jump gaps in this case number 90 jonathan bullard is one of those guys that shoots gaps so Darnell Wright understands what he has to do, right? He has to slingshot number 90. And this is exactly how you want to get in front of a guy and basically cut him off, right? So to me, this is a really, really nice block by Wright. Slingshots number 90. And that gives the running back a natural cutback into the gap here. So again, great job by Darnell Wright. Let's go ahead and get into the next play and really just get into some of the positive things that Wright showed on tape. So we'll just go ahead and stick with Darnell Wright's run blocking. Uh, you got another one here. This time he's going to reach out in front of the defensive tackle. This is Devontae Wyatt. He doesn't shoot gaps the same way Bullard did on that last snap. As you guys saw, he's able to slingshot. On this one, he just straight up gets in front of the defensive tackle. This is a really nice job, once again, cutting a guy off. He's going to use what is referred to as the rip technique. So if you look at the right arm, he's going to rip to break the contact. Uh, most people know that defensive tackles utilize the rip move. Uh, but that's not the case anymore, right? Offense linemen also utilize this same technique. Uh, it's honestly a smart thing to do for right. And the fact that he's a rookie and he's already doing these type of things is, is impressive. You know, these defensive tackles are taught, make contact, especially against the run, and hold your ground. Create the separation. So Devontae Wyatt here is trying to create the separation. But of course, when D-tackles get their hands on you, you break that contact. And you get out in front of it. So it's a great job right there by Darnell Wright. This play ends up picking up about eight yards. Let's go ahead and get into the next snap. All right, you guys, check this next play out. You're going to get a zone run to the right. Just a beautiful job by Darnell Wright. There's so many different parts within this play that I kind of want to talk about. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job. So it's a 12-yard game by the offense. And, of course, you know, you can make the argument that Wright's block is honestly a big part of this. So the first thing you're going to have to keep in mind is Max Crosby slanting to the inside. So Darnell Wright has to take Crosby and he needs to pass him off. So as Wright is going to the inside, it's going to be up to Jenkins to be able to overtake that. And then Wright has to now go further out. Whoever that first guy is that's going to show in this instance is going to be Amik Robertson because he ends up coming off the blitz. So Jenkins and Wright are going to swap right there. Beautiful job. And you see the technique here that Darnell Wright's going to use. He can just smack him with the right hand and just kind of push him by. Beautiful job. Amik Robertson kind of flashes and Wright just kind of runs right into him. I don't think that was necessarily his guy. You can see that Darnell Mooney is on Robertson. But again, Robertson kind of runs into Wright. And Wright just kind of throws him down. And then he climbs up to the next level. So I want you guys to think about the processing that goes on within this play. right? All of the little factors. Now keep in mind, this play happens within like two seconds. Darnell Wright is going to switch off Max Crosby. He's going to pass him off. He runs into him. He picks up the safety. You know, this right here just kind of shows the processing that Darnell Wright has. And this is one of the things that you'll notice if you guys watch enough snaps with Wright. He's a very, very, very smart, high IQ football player, right? He gets it. He gets the game of football. He gets the techniques and the little things you have to do to win. And it really shows on tape. And it really shows on this play here specifically. You're going to get a quarterback power on this play. Quarterback's going to keep the football. And our Darnell Wright's going to pull, get out in front, and absolutely crush the cornerback that kind of shows. Now, one of the things with Wright that I think you see right away on tape, uh, outside of him being smart, is just that he plays physical, right? And he definitely played physical in, in college, right? He definitely pl plays that style that not every single offensive lineman play, especially offensive tackles. There's a lot less guys like Darnell Wright or Trent Williams or Tyron Smith, guys that truly, truly play physical. 
Uh, and you see plays like this with Darnell Wright, and he he doesn't only hit corners, right? Obviously, this is a cornerback that he puts down. There's plays on tape that you can watch where he tosses other guys as well, like this play here, where he's going to double team on the three technique defensive tackle, and he just gets physical with this guy. And you see it right there at the point of attack. I mean, they absolutely move this guy. So much so that the defense tackle just gives up his leverage. He gives up his gap. All to just kind of stay on his feet. Uh, but to me, that's just a great job moving guys. And again, a lot of reps like this. You got another one right here. Once again, he's going to get physical and he's going to absolutely crush this guy. Look at the movement here on the outside linebacker. Takes him five, six yards to the right. Puts him down. Obviously, the outside linebacker is also trying to keep his, his gap containment. Uh, but again, just a really nice job being physical. And he doesn't only use that mindset to put people down. You know, he can absolutely move people as well. Here's another one. He's going to block down on the defensive tackle. And once again, just look at the movement he's going to generate within this play. All right. So again, to me, I love the fact that Darnell Wright plays aggressive. He plays with that mindset where he wants to move people off the spot. He wants to put people down. Another part of being able to properly run block is to be able to reach. And he's going to, on this one, pick off the inside linebacker. He's going to take Wyatt. He's going to allow the right guard to take that. And he's going to basically get out there. And he's going to pick off the linebacker. And you can see that because of the block by right, that allows this play right here to pick up 10 yards. So that's a great block by Darnell Wright. All right, being able to understand exactly how he needs to get out of his stance, what he has to do in order to make sure the guard's able to take that defense tackle and try to hook him as well as be able to get out in front of that linebacker and exactly where you need to kind of position your body, right? Keep in mind, it might not be as noticeable because all these guys are moving to the left, but Darnell Wright doesn't go directly at the linebacker. He's going to take this wide angle to set himself up, understanding the linebacker is going to make the read and just kind of naturally go to where he's ultimately going to end up being, right? So again, great job by Darnell Wright to be able to reach. I think it's one of his biggest assets. You'll see another one here. This time it's an inside reach on the defensive tackle as opposed to an outside reach on the linebacker. Uh, but again, just fighting through it, right? And, and getting there, getting to the spot. This is what allows Darnell Wright to be such a great run blocking offensive tackle. And trust me when I say this, he's equally as impressive in pass pro. And we'll get at, we'll get into kind of some of the things he does struggle with in both run blocking and pass blocking at the end of the video. But again, just a beautiful job. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do to get out in front of this, this defensive tackle. Uh, you see Nate Davis do a great job helping and allowing Darnell Wright to kind of get there. That's a beautiful job right there. Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and just switch focus and get into pass protection. To me, Darnell Wright's a very, very, very good pass blocker. And if you guys watch his tape from weeks one and two, by the time weeks 15, 16, 17 kind of came around, you saw the instant improvements with this guy. Right, he was so much more comfortable. He was playing more aggressive. The the footwork that we saw in college definitely translated, and he was able to stay in front of guys so much cleaner. He was able to get into his pass set so much better. And when I look at Wright and I really study his pass protection, I think this is gonna be one of his strengths as he kind of goes forward. Now I already said he's a great run blocker, and that is fact. I think day one he was a great run blocker, specifically because he was so smart. But I think. When it comes specifically to his pass pro, you can definitely see so much upside there as well. I know from a sack perspective, he didn't have a great season this season, according to Pro Football Focus. Uh, but if you guys put the tape on, you see so many high-quality snaps. Going up against guys like Rashawn Gary, if you really slow it down, you know you can see what Gary tries to do to him. You can see what Darnell Wright tries to do to him. You can almost see that Darnell Wright is looking to possibly throw a punch here or at least make Rashawn Gary feel that a punch is coming. You can see Gary throws the right hand up. He's going to try to swap the hands. He's trying to guess when Darnell Wright's going to throw his hands, and it's just off, right? And you can see when Gary's arm comes back down here, Darnell Wright strikes, and he lands his shot, and he walks in, and he shuts it down. And these are the type of snaps you see from Darnell Wright over and over and over again. Another thing I really like with Darnell Wright's tape is he's very patient when it comes to pass pro. On this one here, he's going to just wait for the defensive end to come to him. Uh, it's part of what I like when it comes to right. Another thing that you have to understand is different schemes use different protection calls. They use different uh, types of blocks, right? And I'll give you guys a quick example here. Notice how you're going to get a five-man protection. The running back's going to check the linebacker, make sure he doesn't blitz. But ultimately, he's running a route. And this is not something that every team does. So 
The Bears love to run five-man protections, and what that does is that gets your guys into single block situations. Uh, so when that happens, you know, your offensive tackles are expected to be able to anchor down. They're expected to go into one-on-one situations and be able to shut down whoever it is. And with Wright, I love the fact that he's always so calm, he's so collective, and he doesn't panic. Right on this one here, he just sits back and waits until the defense spend makes contact first. All right, so to me, that's a good trait to have. Doesn't panic, doesn't overextend. And on this one, he keeps the quarterback clean. So as I kind of mentioned in the last clip, the Bears did a lot of five-man protection this past season. And that is not normal for most offensive lines. Uh, you know, some of the lines that I study, oftentimes they'll have running backs or tight ends chipping. Now, on this one, you do get number 23, who's going to influence the defensive line. And that's specifically to influence the speed of the defensive end here. If the defensive end is going to try to speed rush, the running back's going to chip him. The running back's going to hit him and make him go back to the inside. And that's ultimately done to help the left tackle. On the other end, you don't get an influence. You allow Darnell Wright to get out there and be in a true one-on-one. Right, And these concepts and schemes are important because the Bears ran a ton of this stuff and it does make it harder for the offensive tackles. Now, there's other teams around the NFL that will help their offensive tackles more. They'll line up tight ends and running backs and they'll help those guys out. And I'm not saying the Bears didn't do that. They did do that a little bit specifically against the Browns who have a really good front seven. Uh, But for the most part over the course of the season, there's a lot of single one-on-one block opportunities for Darnell, right? And we got to see a lot of some of the things he can do on tape. Uh, As I said, he's a very smart player, so you see him here pass off and pick up the defensive line game between him and Davis. They're going to do a great job switching. Uh, And you even get a little snatch concept here by Darnell Wright. If you keep an eye on the right hand right there, he's going to snatch the defensive end's left hand. The defensive lineman is going to get the left hand into right. He's going to push right, and right's going to snatch it right there. He's going to break the contact, and that removes the leverage that this defensive lineman has. And then Darnell Wright basically just shuts him down. So it's a pretty good job right there, being able to swap on the defensive line game. You see the pass is ultimately incomplete. Kind of a bad job by the wide receiver. Let's go ahead and get to the next snap. All right, you guys, the last clip I want to show you when it comes to Wright's pass protection is his ability to change up his pass sets. Uh, one of the things that Wright does is He doesn't only set up in the vertical set or the 45 degree set. Uh, He oftentimes jump sets or he'll oftentimes fake a set. Uh, On this one specifically, he's going to straight up come out of his set and he's going to jump set. He's going to close the distance between him and the defensive end. Uh, But this is done to attack the defensive end. When the defensive end gets out of his stance, he doesn't expect Darnell Wright to come directly at him and take the fight to him. Uh, but Wright does on this one, he changes it up a little bit, which is different than the last two sets specifically. It does a great job just anchoring down and really just shutting down the defensive end. Here's two plays earlier. You're going to see once again, great job. This time he's going to get into a true vertical set, one-on-one, just anchors down, right? You see him really drop the hips. You see him drop the left foot, right foot, and just kind of how it turns as he makes contact with the defensive end right there. And the anchor's dropped. He's wanting the rep at that point. So it's a great job right there. But I do want to switch focus. But I do want to talk a little bit about Darnell Wright and some of the losses he had this season. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Uh, so Wright did have some losing reps this season. A lot of his snaps that he lost, believe it or not, came in the Browns game, which is kind of interesting in its own right. Uh, but one of the things with Darnell Wright is he went up against Miles Garrett a ton. And I know some people are going to say, you know, well, I look at his tape against Garrett. Garrett's obviously the best defense man in the NFL. But these are the reps that I think Wright can learn from. So I think from that perspective, I kind of want to analyze them a little bit. Uh, Miles Garrett is probably one of one as an edge player, specifically because of the different things he can do. And this this play right here is a great example of it. Now, Darnell Wright clearly loses. And uh, Justin Fields feels the pressure and he gets the ball out maybe sooner than he wanted to. Maybe he just kind of takes that shot down because he didn't want to go through the progressions. Because of the fact that the right tackle loses. Now, the first thing you'll notice within this play is that Garrett's going to actually change his angle. Uh, He's going to initially come inwards, but he's going to ultimately go further. And he's going to do that mid pass rush, which in itself is kind of unique. But this is part of what makes Miles Garrett great. He changes directions really, really well. Very bendy. Uh, And then even within that, you're going to see him throw this right hand towards right. But the right hand's not actually going to land into right. He's going to actually turn that into a rip move. 
So to me, that's a great job being able to change your pass rush as you're making contact with Darnell, right? I, I doubt Darnell Wright has seen a defensive end lean into making contact with him and ultimately turn that long arm into a rip. But he does do that and it does work, right? The rip move here is very effective. He breaks the contact that Darnell Wright has. And you can see that Miles Garrett's going to ultimately pressure the quarterback. The quarterback gets the ball out. This was not the only losing rep that Darnell Wright had against Miles Garrett. Here's another rep here. This one, Garrett's going to basically slip the block. Wright doesn't do a good enough job, in my opinion, making the contact with Garrett. Check this play out here. Once again, Miles Garrett, very, very twitchy. I mean, the way he changes direction on here is impressive. Uh, but this is a losing rep once again. Now, this one doesn't pressure fields, but you'll see that as Garrett's going to pass rush, uh, you'll see him be basically be able to turn the corner right there. So that's a losing rep once again for Darnell Wright. Uh, and again, I know this is the best defensive end in the NFL, but this is more so of learning and getting better, right? Understanding what certain guys can do, uh, being able to lose and then come back next season and, and recover and be able to actually win these reps. Uh, but right here, basically what ends up happening is Darnell Wright is going to lean a little bit too much into it. And you can see that because he's leaning into it, Garrett just swipes the hand away and he ultimately beats Darnell Wright. Again, the quarterback gets the ball out. It's a, it looks like a one, two, three step drops. The ball's out quick. Uh, but if it wasn't a th three step drop, right? Garrett would obviously have gotten there. So sometimes Darnell Wright does get caught leaning a little bit. Uh, here's one where uh, he's going to quick set it and he's going to end up getting caught leaning. Now the ball's obviously out, so it doesn't technically matter. Uh, but you know, when you watch every single snap of certain guys, you'll start seeing tendencies that end up happening. So Darnell Wright doesn't lean into it usually right away, right? He's not going to initially lean into a guy. He'll he'll sit back. He'll wait for that guy to make contact. Uh, he'll use independent hands. And I think this is one of the big things with Wright. So if he was leaning into Aiden Hutchinson here, the first time he makes contact, you can see Hutchinson's actually going to swipe the hands away right there. So if Wright was leaning into this, Wright would have fell forward right now. But because he was not, he was able to just kind of bring the hands back up, puts the hands right back into Hutchinson. But this time, Hutchinson's going to spin off of it. So the second time, you can see Darnell Wright ultimately ends up getting caught leaning. And he ends up losing. Now, the ball was already out, so ultimately it doesn't matter. But if you guys watch the snap in real time, you can see that Darnell Wright does lose the rep. Again, just kind of nitpicking some of what we see. So here's another one. On this one, he's going to jump set, so he's going to lean into it right away. Uh, and he just kind of gets swam over. The running back does a great job right there helping, but again, you see that he's going to lose because he gets caught leaning. You got another one here. Wright's going to go up against Cameron Jordan. He's going to lean into it. Uh, he actually does a pretty good job initially, but Jordan does hit the corner and he does end up beating Wright. Now, one of the things that you'll notice from this season is Wright played a ton of really good pass rushers. From guys like Khalil Mack to Cam Jordan to Miles Garrett, Aiden Hutchinson, Rashawn Gary, Max Crosby. Uh, the guy got to play against some of the top tier edge players and he got to play a lot of different guys. And truth be told, he had losing reps, but majority of them were not losing reps. Majority of his snaps were snaps like this, where he just does a great job. And you really see, you know, the, the smartness within the play. And I don't know if, know if smartness is a, an actual term here, but uh, you see it, right? So uh, a great example is this play here. Max Crosby slanting towards the inside. This is a, a run here to the inside. And in this run here specifically, Darnell Wright is supposed to seal Crosby to the outside. Darnell Wright is supposed to hold his ground, as is the tight end here. So there's duo. So you get doubles up to the linebackers from the interior guys. But what's going to happen on this play is that Crosby's going to jump the inside gap, right? He's basically stunting to the inside, referred to as a run stunt. And Wright does the smart thing, which is if Max Crosby wants to stunt this to the inside, make contact with him and just push him that same way. And on this one here, the running back does a great job just staying very, very tight to the uh, to the offensive tackle. You also see the blitz came off the edge right there. Uh, the slot corner comes off the edge. But again, this is a smart football play, right? And most snaps, if you guys watch Darnell Wright, the guy's doing a great job. He's winning his snaps. He's moving people. He's being physical. He's being smart at the same time. He's doing his job. Uh, and you just see him winning. All right, play after play after play, you see Darnell Wright winning. You know, one of the interesting things with Wright, back in January, before he got drafted, right, four months before he got drafted, 
This guy was not projected as a top two round pick. And, and that wasn't by the, the actual scouts and general managers. That was more so of the football community. And after I watched this guy's tape, I said, this guy is the real deal. He has what it takes to be an absolute star at the next level. And of course, Ryan Poles, being a former offensive lineman, he saw exactly what I saw with Darnell Wright. And that is that this guy's just different. He's smart, techniques advanced. He's strong enough to hold his own. He's long enough in terms of length. And Ryan Poles bought the hype with Darnell Wright. And I know some fans were kind of against it early on, but I think it's very clear, just play after play, how intelligent this guy is and why I think Darnell Wright's going to become one of the best spread tackles in the NFL. At the moment, some people say it's Lane Johnson. I'm on the train of it's Panay Sewell. But I think soon here, we're going to realize that Darnell Wright is is right up there as well. I don't want to say he's already won the top right tackles because he was just a rookie and he had rookie mistakes. I, and I, I generally speaking, hold off judgment until the end of the second season. Uh, but if Darnell Wright improves what the average rookie improves in terms of that year to leap, uh, this play here is another good example. Uh, he's a little late out of his stance. So right there, you got to keep in mind, most of the time, guys kind of lose reps. Uh, this guy processes what happens. He processes the run stunt. Number 90 sweat slants to the inside, 94 slants to the left. And uh, he processes all of it and he picks it up and he pushes 94 outwards. And the run hits right underneath that for 35 yards. Uh, so if Darnell Wright just takes that year or two leap that most guys do take, I think the guy's going to end up being legitly one of the best right tackles in the NFL. I think by the time his second season comes to an end, uh, we'll, put, we'll be putting Darnell Wright up there as one of the top four or five tackles in the NFL. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, consider subscribing. I always appreciate all of the support Bears fans have given me on this channel. Uh, it really does mean a lot. We will be covering whoever the Bears end up drafting if they pick up some key free agents. We'll be covering all that, so subscribe if you guys are not subscribed, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.